Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. No. Um. <laughs>
slowly whittling it down like a sculpture from five hours to three hours to an hour to 45 minutes, you know, to, to 30 minutes to 15 minutes to eight minutes to set it, blah, 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 till you get it down to three or four minutes. I mean, um, but if you're, if you're a good filmmaker, you, you know, the, the expression is, you know, you learn to kill your babies. So you just have to, at some point be brutal. And when it all flows together, it should feel a little bit to me like a song. So you know when when something's out of out of rhythm or out out of uh, how should I I put this out of the song structure. So um, it's off key. You, yeah, yeah, off key. Right. So um, you just you just uh, feel it, cut it down, and then sometimes you laugh about the things that totally did not make it into the movie. I mean, so many days of. Or, or uh, there's something, uh, there might be a, a 15 second clip of a Keo playing a guitar riff. And I'm like, I filmed him for eight hours that night. You know, yeah. it's just, uh, that's the nature of the documentary. Well, I'm glad that you're using digital instead of film these days, because then you'd really be out of cash. <laughs> we shot a little 16 in the whiskey, whiskey a go-go seat. The, fi the final shot of them taking a bow is actually 16 millimeter and the mirror ball fuzzy shot is 16 millimeter. But that was all I could afford to do on this film. Uh, you know, I've interviewed several Olympians and after they've either placed or competed and dedicated four years straight of their life to their sport, uh -huh. the day it's over, it becomes what's next. Did yeah. you have that feeling after eight years and the final completion and you just hit save on the digital recording and go, uh oh, what's next? Oh yeah, existentially, it's like a whole thing. I don't know what. Um, I've never had a baby, but I've had this film, so it kind of that's my approximation. Uh, it's intense. Um, in some ways, now because I'm, you know, still doing this, still talking about it, still uh, editing little clips for uh, online and stuff like that. It feels like I'm still in it, but um, it is wild to think that this this chapter is coming to a close and uh i don't think there's gonna be a mr jimmy too <laughs> the next one is you're gonna find a van halen tribute band in south korea and oh, yeah no no please no more no more music rights no more no i don't know a film without music at all uh i don't know but uh, peter you're doing a silent film next yeah that might be the way to go <laughs> You know, it'll just be like a French movie for the first 15 minutes. All you hear is a fly buzzing and nothing else. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, I wouldn't have to clear those rights. No, um, I don't know, but I, I can't help myself. I just, I, I, I mean, throughout the edit, now looking back, I'm like, did I need to have him play Custard Pie for six seconds right there? I don't know, but it was, I love it. I love it. Or, uh does all the music have to be this good? And it's like, I just, I'm just allergic to music that isn't, I don't, great. I'm a complete snob. I mean, once you have Led Zeppelin in your movie, whatever you put next to it, how do you put anything less than Muddy Waters next to Led Zeppelin? I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to hold up. Well, good sir. You have taste in music. That is for sure. Uh, and you're an excellent filmmaker. So I commend you on the combination of the two. Oh, um, no, thank you. I mean, seriously, after eight years of work, having the movie out there and like you said, you know, having people respond to it, it's like, oh, OK, maybe I can do this again. I don't know about another eight year project, but maybe I can do this again because this one was a was a real labor of love. So, um, yeah, the, the, the work was real and having people respond to it is is awesome. Maybe follow a, a high school marching band through a season where the marching band is actually better than the football team. That way it'll only take three months to record. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I like it. You got pitches. You have pitches. These are good. I'm just trying to save you time so you don't spend another eight years making a documentary. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I need know, something with a short window. <laughs> I thought I thought this movie was actually going to end when he goes to Japan with Zepp again and, and they put on this amazing concert. And I thought, oh, well, uh, seems like we're we're good. East meets West. Uh, had some differences, all came together, made it work. And Akio immediately was like, didn't you see all the mistakes they made? And I was like, oh, no, where are we going with this? And he's like, I'm quitting the band. I'm starting a new band. It's going to be huge. Uh, and I was like, I guess I'm going to follow you on this journey. And then cut to five years later. So that's why I'm giving you the three-month pitch. High school marching band, football season's only three months. 
Yeah. Or like a, like a grand prix or something like something in real time. Like, uh, I don't know. I need, I need constraints. Yeah. Yeah. The Kentucky Derby, the race is only a quarter mile. Okay. See, that's that kind of thing. Perfect. Yeah. I'm glad that you had so much fun. Well, you're having fun talking about the film, even though it is a labor of love, you sold your car just for a trip to Japan. You did so much to get it done. And here we are in the final stretch in promoting the documentary to sit there and realize that it is a dream come true. And there is that emotional reward to come mm-hmm. along with completion of a, of a documentary like this. And the audience is resonating with it. There has to be a bit of a sigh of relief that, oh, my God, or thank God I didn't waste eight years and everybody hated it. <laughs> I mean, that would suck if I had no talent and the film was shit. Uh, that, that, I mean, <laughs> that would be a real bummer. But um, yeah, I mean, even more than that, what's cool is um, as difficult as it was to pay for all this stuff and pay for the music and negotiate all this stuff and blah, 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 blah. Like, um, man, I made exactly the movie I wanted to make with the music I wanted. Uh, I had no right uh literally m- metaphorically everything to think i could do this uh i started out from naive bliss good faith whatever um uh, just yeah maybe i can make a music a movie about led zeppelin's music when i literally had no right and um but somehow we made a piece of work that they deemed worthy of u- using their music so yeah it is really freaking moving i mean it's exciting that it's it got done every once in a while i'm like wow i did it a lot of people even people on the crew my sound guy just told me gabe we must have filmed 15 uh, mr jimmy rehearsals in la at five hours at a clip and maybe we used like a minute total of footage and he's like you know i can i tell you now that i thought you were a complete lunatic and you would never get the rights and this movie would never be seen and i was like okay he's like but you did it i was like i did and uh, it's just great to, you know, as an artist, you make the movie you wanted. I wanted to have this Led Zeppelin music in there performed by AQ. I wanted to have John Lee Hooker, Muddy Waters, uh, Elvis Presley, and just kept working it, just kept working it, just kept working it until, wow, we could do it. We could get Elvis Presley singing Mystery Train in my movie. I mean, that's like just that. I'm like, I love that. Every time that cue comes up, I'm like, wow, we got Elvis doing mystery train from sun records like what a cue what an honor to have that in the movie alongside led zeppelin's music so um yeah it's i don't even know what to say i'm beyond happy it doesn't even start to cut it you know i've heard musicians say that they haven't made their sergeant pepper yet because that's what they equate to as being one of the greatest albums ever produced Uh is this your sergeant pepper i don't know i think i look looking at it now i'm like i this was an education times a thousand in so many ways i was an idiot when i started and i think that helped me uh not not realizing how difficult it would be to do certain stuff um i i think i i i I got some more goodies in me but um you know i think as an artist you don't you 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 don't know you just make your stuff and then you see what comes out i mean i think I think the good thing that I want to replicate is that this movie, I didn't think about it too much in terms of would, would people like this? Would it be popular? I was just like, I fucking love Led Zeppelin. I love that this guy loves Led Zeppelin. I love his passion. I love what he's doing. I want to see this movie. I want to know more about this crazy guy. I want to see all the work he puts into it. So I think when you just do something and it comes from a place of like real love, like it's, it's going to be interesting if nothing else might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's going to have some passion to it. Well, to mention crazy, I do have to throw this out there. The only photo that you have on your IMDB page is your driver's license. picture. (laughs) Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Maybe I should uh, adjust that. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten that before. I just changed it on my Instagram. Um, and I think it was on my dating profile. And then I, I I know the police might've shown up at my door or something like that, but, um, yeah uh don't give me it's i yeah. i think it's totally punk rock so it's it's hilarious that you did yeah, that i just i don't know i mean uh i like a fish i like official documents i i like uh passport photos license photos something about it it's a moment in time they're kind of goofy and uh you know it's me i mean it's certified by the state of california it's not and you know there's no airbrushing 
<laughs> that's true. Um, you know, to go from a documentary short like The King of Size to an eight year labor of love like Mr. Jimmy and to go from bodybuilding to, you know, music, uh, yes. you know, what is the intrigue from subject to subject for you? Obviously, this one is the love of Led Zeppelin and to meet somebody that is a kindred spirit in their love and has surpassed you in their education of the band. But like what what sits there and clicks in you is like, all right, we're going to do this bodybuilding story. We're going to do this music story and so on and so forth. So you can watch King of Size. It's on Vimeo and it is the same in that it is one character, one man with a complete solitary focus and obsession. In King of Size, his obsession is to become the world's largest bodybuilder and to to achieve that that dream. Uh, and yeah, what did I have to do with it? I've, I guess I've lost uh, most of my uh, muscle. But when I was in college, I was that guy. I was completely obsessed with weightlifting. That became my obsession. My goth period was uh, was spent in the gym, and I weighed two hundred and seventy pounds. And was completely obsessed with that. And I connected with Tony, Tony Natale, the king of size, in the gym. I saw him in the gym. He was like almost my Jimmy Page of weightlifting. And so I approached him to make a film. That film, even though it's just as short, took, I think, six years or something to make. So, um, you know, I guess I'm just, I'm obsessive and I'm obsessed with obsessives and I'm obsessed with people who have a passion. And I think same similarly you might go who the f give, give cares about bodybuilding or weightlifting or whatever tony is so pure in his passion for it and is, is such an amazing storyteller and such a good guy that you all of a sudden you're drawn in to rooting for this guy in something that you might have absolutely no interest in so yeah the through line there is probably me and my obsession with obsessives and it's all some maybe veiled form of therapy of me investigating uh, OCD or whatever you want to call it. I love it. Um, you know, with this one, you got the huge thumbs up from South by Southwest, which is absolutely incredible for any filmmaker, documentarian, short form, long form feature, etc. You know, when you get the thumbs up from them and the love from that film festival, you mm -hmm. know, does it feel more so, all right, I got the critics on my side and now you're getting this fan appreciation on the other side because usually the two uh aren't harmonious in our opinions whether from critic to fan and vice versa that when you get that harmonious blend is it more significant than one side liking you more than the other i think so i mean i i just tried to i don't know make, keep it real make it real i think um you know, I think we were a really good fit for South by. I mean, the music, rock and roll. I think uh, I think this movie is, you know, kind of a little bit ballsy. It's got rock and roll in it, but it's it'll, if I can pat myself on the back, it, the craftsmanship is there. It's really well made, so if it can really work. Yeah, it works at a festival. We we got our laurels, we got our festival awards, but also the movie I think has enough realness and balls, and is just entertaining, and is so not cookie cutter. I mean, there's a lot of music documentaries out there where if they were doing this, they would have had eight celebrities at the beginning. Led Zeppelin is very important. Led Zeppelin, oh, uh, hi, I'm a famous person. When I heard Led Zeppelin for the first time, yeah, okay, how about you just play the music? Just play the effing music and let people experience it. And and I don't know, either they, either they want to watch a different movie about a different band or they're really going to get into it. So... Yeah, that is actually awesome, though. The fact that now, you know, when you go out to, uh, I don't know, theaters and just the general public, I mean, hey, there's no, it, you're online, anyone can say whatever they want, which is kind of great. I mean, somebody can say, somebody said on Facebook, I'm looking at this release plan. They're playing a lot of small towns. I bet this guy, it'll take him 30 years to make his money back. And I was like, yes, this guy's right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, probably. I mean, but um, believe it or not, uh, you don't necessarily do everything to like make a buck. Like uh, if I was trying to make a buck, would I use a Howling Wolf a sound cue for four seconds? Like, uh, no, that's not about making a buck. That's like, oh, let's just make a fucking great moment in this movie. So, um, yeah, I, I do think 
critics and stuff, awesome. If anything, that just helps you reach more people and 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 get the movie into some more theaters and stuff. Um, and the fans are just awesome because it's like the Wild West. Anybody out there is entitled to their opinion. They can say, movie's too long. Or, uh, you know, they can say whatever they want. But when they say, oh, we really dig and respect what this guy did, I mean, that's pretty awesome. You got that 70s vibe going of like, you know, the indie filmmakers from that era of I just want to tell a good story more than anything. And I dig that. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I just... For me, I think like uh, whatever you're doing, uh, making a record, uh, making a movie, if you're not just doing it to to get yourself off or trusting your own ears and eyes, like just fuck off. I mean, you're you're not here to make marketing materials. I think you're you're trying to make something original, trying to make something that you trust your gut. Doing, uh, hey uh, hey, let me screen this to eighteen uh, hipsters and and take notes. Like I don't care what they think. I just want to open the movie with three straight minutes of Days of Confused. If you're not into that, go watch another movie. I mean, because if you're not into it, there's something wrong with you. You know, like, um, that's my attitude. And I think I think people get that. And I I hope people vibe on that, that it's, it's, it's just not this corporate kind of thing. I got to ask it from this perspective. So I had reviewed a documentary and interviewed the documentarian, uh, it was a specific, it was a documentary about a specific show that I absolutely detested, but <laughs> I love the documentary. And so it was that dichotomy of like, I hate the property, but I love what you did about the property. Yeah. What do you tell somebody like me that let's say they're not a Led Zeppelin fan, uh, but end up wanting to watch the documentary out of curiosity? What will they get out of it? You know, without you like giving them the finger of like, well, you don't like Zeppelin, so don't, so don't bother. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, I think anytime you see a character who is putting everything on the line for something, you're going to be drawn into that. Somebody who leaves behind their wife, their mom, their everything in Japan to pursue a dream at age 50. Guy had a day job until he was 50 years old, and he's put it all on the line to try to make it. Don't we all want to try to make it? If you can't connect with that, like you don't have a pulse, I don't think. Like I, I think, I think, yes, it's a film about it's a film about Led Zeppelin, and it's about this music, and it's about the work of the great Jimmy Page. It's also a film about just somebody chasing their dreams at the age of fifty and taking a chance. And spoiler alert, it fucking works out. For a long time, it doesn't work out, and he gets his ass kicked. Uh, but if you haven't got your ass kicked in life, like you haven't fucking lived. So I, I think like, um, I think people just connect. It's just the universal of a hero chasing that dream and getting kicked in the face all the way through until the finale when they fucking grasp the golden chalice and, and hold it high. For him, the golden chalice is performing the music of Jimmy Page on a proper stage with Jason Bonham all over the world. Fuck yeah. So um, that's why I think if you're not not a Zeppelin fan, hopefully you're a fan of human beings. Hopefully you're a fan of human beings chasing their dreams. Hopefully you have a dream. There's something in the back of your mind that you never went after. And it's still, you're still itching for it. Well, here's a guy fucking going for it. And fuck, he's getting his ass kicked. Is he going to make it? Stay tuned, you know, watch the movie. I think that's what connects people to it. I dig it, man. Peter, where can we find you on social media if we want to continue the conversation? And what's the website so we can uh, check out the scheduling of, of Mr. Jimmy? Awesome. Yes. So everything around the movie is at Mr. Jimmy Movie. So that's the website, mrjimmymovie.com. All the screenings are updated there. You just click watch. The social media is Mr. Jimmy Movie on Insta, on Twitter, on all the things. Me personally, if you want to see what my little tweets are, my little Instas are, Peter M. Dowd, all one word. And any support, boy, if, if anyone can share a thing, post a thing, it goes a long way because uh, this movie wasn't funded by some corporation. It's just my my billowing credit card debt. And uh, it's just uh, good vibes. So thank you so much. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on Mr. Jimmy and a phenomenal documentary. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully I get to meet you face to face at some point. Yeah, where where are you? I'm in Huntington Beach. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm up here in LA. I'm in Glassell Park on the east side. Uh, come oh, see. Cool. Yeah, come. If you come, are you going to come to any of the Hollywood screenings? Or, eh. uh, I'm not sure. It depends, like on schedule and everything, because I'm also a PA announcer for a lot of college sports. You got the voice. I was like, this guy's. I'm like, either this guy's mic is great, or his voice is great, or both. Yeah, you have that voice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm doing uh, women's college volleyball right now, and then basketball is going to pick up soon. So. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, if you don't make it to the LA screenings, I think I, I think we're working on an OC theater. So, uh, you know, let me know or uh, come out to a Mr. Jimmy show sometime or something like that. Like, um, happy to buy you a beer. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I'll hit you up on Insta and we'll go from there. 